Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Omega Metroid podcast from OmegaMetroid.com. The whole band is back together, baby. My name is Andy Spateri, joined by Dakota Lasky, Duminal Crossing. How are you gentlemen doing today? Uh, uh, doing... I don't know, Dak, you go first, I go first? Whoa, what is this? I know, it's well, been man. a while, right? Like, since... Who, who does what? I Yeah, I think because my name was first. Like, you know what, I'm going to jump in, but hey, I'm doing all right. Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm... It's a pretty average Sunday. It's time to talk some Metroid and, uh, you know, already off to like a fantastic start. Like, great job. And yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing good and uh, ready to talk some Metroid. Nothing's really, it's been kind of light in the Metroid world lately. You know, yeah. I feel like there's not like too much going on. So we're in one of those like lull periods almost. So now we're doing a game show again, uh, which is always fun. You know, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing good. I, I really, I feel that actually like way worse on the Zelda side, which which is funny because there's like way more there's Zelda content, right? Out. Like, yeah. I, I know. And like, there's this game coming out, but like, I don't know. I've been, I've been complaining about this for like weeks on the Zelda cast. So like, it just feels like there's like nothing going on. Like there's no nothing. Well, so, yeah. I don't, well, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about that too long. Uh, I think, I think we might be getting some information on that soon, but you know, my spicy hot take is I actually love the fact that i know nothing about this game it is so awesome because like my because like the big thing for me with when it comes to breath of the wild is the exploration and you know finding all these mysteries and secrets and you know slowly opening up this world and you know the less i know about this game the more dare i say hyped i get for it and i I don't know i'm really looking forward to tears of the kingdom solely because i know nothing about it they're doing a great job andy look i I guess so needed yeah i guess so (laughs) By the way, I saw well, you on well, Twitter. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, they do have to market it for people that are not terminally online like us. Like, you know, the vast majority of the people us. like need oh, to know about I, this game. Yeah. So. I, I don't agree that, uh, with the us. But, um, I Andy, think I, I know where you're you, going. Andy, I saw you talking about, because you were talking about before the show, uh, how much you hate Elden Ring. Um, uh, yeah. And, and on Twitter, you were talking about it. But you said um, how Breath of the Wild has a narrative story and characters which i yes. thought was which i thought was a a shocking revelation because when i played the game i don't remember any of that being there so in so terms me... of breath of the wild 2 uh, that's all it needs if you could just take breath of the wild and then give it a plot and a story i'm in i'm in for breath of the wild 2 if they don't have any of that just like breath of the one i might honestly i might just skip it to be honest okay let, let me tell you something because actually um, we just finished doing an episode of the Zelda cast where we talked about Elden Ring and Horizon Zero Dawn, but it was mostly about Elden Ring. And the initial premise was what can Tears of the Kingdom learn from Elden Ring? And so my my hot take, and everyone listening to this is going to absolutely hate this, and it's going to sound hokey from a guy who hosts a Zelda podcast, and I also want to preface this with I played like 30 hours of it, but here we go. I don't think that there is a single thing that Elden Ring does that Breath of the Wild does not do better. Not, not one. I haven't played it. I can't comment. Now, I, I, par- I have not got to like the big dungeons of the game. I've, I haven't, I haven't made it. But uh, that, that was my, my spicy meatball that I threw out earlier today was that, you know, the, the, the from software games, uh, they're, they're just, I think that they're just not for me, which is too bad because I really want to love them. But uh, they don't want to love me. I uh, I'm curious how you'll enjoy Armored Core Six when that comes out. Cause I don't I feel like you when you talk about from software games, you're talking about yeah, sorry, Dark Souls. Yes, and sorry, let me correct secure, myself. Yeah. Soulsborne. Yeah. So okay, have you yeah, ever I think, played? I any think of they Armored already games? no, no, but I, the trailer looked awesome. I, that yeah, that looked that wicked. Be dope. Yeah, I, I dope. think FromSoft already confirmed that Armored Core Six was very much going to be its own thing, not influenced by the Souls games. So yes, yeah. that's why I'm ask. That's why I'm asking because this I will is say going to be the same kind of game. I think Elden Ring is. In the same, in a similar vein, I think Elden Ring was better than Bloodborne in almost every way. My my opinion. I, I don't play Bloodborne. I don't think a lot of people like a lot of people say it's one of the best games of all time, and and I can kind of it's kind of the same thing. I, like I I think that there is a really fun game there, but like the combat in those games just is is not for me. It's a little bit too slow. It's a little bit too punishing, I guess. And like I can hear the the people being like, "Oh, you got to get good." And like I'm just not good. I'm never gonna get good, so they're they're just not for me. So there we go. But gentlemen, we are here to uh, to talk some Metroid. Even though it does, you're right. It does feel like there's nothing going on in the world of Metroid. So when that happens, by God, we make something happen. And that leads us to today 
to uh, the return, after a brief hiatus, the return of our favorite show, Samus's Percentages. And the premise is simple. I will read you gentlemen a statement, and then we will weigh in with a percentage on how likely to be true that statement in that statement is. 100% being that it is uh, obviously 100% it's going to happen. Nothing can stop it from happening. Zero being that it will never in a million years ever happen. And Duminal, let's My just, favorite number. Let's just think before we give out zeros and hundreds, okay? Yeah, let's let's just let's not let's not be too extreme. So, how about a nice icebreaker to get us all uh, familiar with the concept here. So, Samus's percentage is number one. Omega Metroid destroys the Zelda cast next year in trivia. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mean, say, I'm gonna say sixty percent. I believe in you guys. Well, I mean, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a tough question, really. I mean, you know, how much are, uh, you know, what is, how much are the scales going to be weighted? That's the question. Because I mean, let's be real. Wow. It's a fair fight. If it's a fair fight where no hands are tipping the scales, like, I mean, Omega Metroid's got this hands down, but I mean, you know, you know, if there's anything we've learned this year, you know, you can't take that for granted. So, but wow. you know, we're not about the Johns here. Weighted scales are not 99.9%. Because I know oh, you hate my. those. I know you hate those uh, weighted, those, uh, those hard numbers, Andy. So there you go. What if you lose now? What if you lose? I mean, Yikes. I don't know. I mean, the question was, what are the chances that we destroy them? I think destroying them is going to be That's very true, low. Yeah. I think we're going to win. True. I do not think we're going to destroy them, considering both um, shows, I think, were close, right? Like, the first mm -hmm. time we won, it was close. That last one was also... I mean, if I had gotten any questions right, like we, yeah. that could have probably... We could have won. So like, <laughs> and I think us destroying them, I'm giving like a 5%. As winning, I would put it like like a sixty or seventy. Oh, okay, that, that's a fair distinction. You're you're right there. Um, and by the way, even though I let's you know I, I did kind of make made your guys' questions a little bit more tougher. That, that was a tight race. It was an entertaining show. If I you gave us questions about so. non Metroid games. Well, and one of them I even got right. I just like, want to throw that out there. <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's I mean, you guys should check out Metroid Rogue Dawn. It's it's really fun. I'm just saying. Um, okay, are we ready to start uh, here, for real? You know what I will say, Andy? Uh, yes. After after we finish recording this podcast, I'm going to play Super Metroid, and I am going to laugh as I escape Zebus, knowing that those turtles aren't going anywhere. Oh, man. I'm going to laugh. You know, speaking of ROM hacks, <laughs> there's got to be a ROM hack out there somewhere where you save the turtle, you right? As, like, oh, as you play as the turtle. Oh, my God. Oh, that, God. That turtle has a crazy jump, too, by the way. He goes, like, to that top of that room. That'd be awesome. Yeah, he's got that shell spin technique. He's got the Bowser up B. Like, I don't believe any of this is real. Like, I think you're still just making up. All that this. that turtle <laughs> has a name, and he has a family. And his name was uh, yeah, not anymore. His name was David Junior. What uh, what what was his name again? Tor Tortuga something. I don't know. Anyways, um, I knew. By the way, David Junior is a legit character. Shows up in the Minish Cap. Good guy. Are we ready? There are some general Nintendo questions sprinkled in here as well, but let's start off with uh, with the Metroid Prime 4 Samus' percentages uh, just to get our blood flowing here. Metroid Prime 4 will have an expansion pass available to buy day one of release. 2%. Oh, okay. That low? Yeah. I'm going to be low, but I, I don't think I'm going to be that low. Maybe... Um... Uh, maybe like 25 percent just like like you do see that you like you like breath of the wild had it uh Zen xenoblade had it actually now that i'm thinking i can't think of a lot of other games age of pokemon calamity i guess it, right? you pokemon yeah fire Any emblem fire emblem yeah so like it's not like it's it's not possible but yeah, is, is Metroid... Like, to me, that kind of says, like, if Metroid has that, that kind of means that, like, Metroid Prime 4 is, like, this big deal game, which I think it's going to be. So, like, I don't think it's impossible, but history isn't really on our side. So, yeah, I, I think yeah, I'm going to say 25. Well, well, even then, like, not many Nintendo games go, like, the day one expansion pet. Like, I mean, you think about it, like, even Super Mario Odyssey, like, that's a pretty big deal game right there. And, I mean, that yeah. game... 
I mean, that game got a couple of free updates, but they didn't even get an expansion pass after release, let alone day one. And That's Metroid true. historically hasn't really done that. Again, the closest we got was the uh, the Dread updates. Right. And so... Just to clarify, too, uh, I'm not trying to say that the, the the actual DLC will be available on day one, just that, like, you can... You'd be that you can pre-order. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Combine, you know, the fact that Metroid hasn't done that precedent yet, combined with the fact that Nintendo doesn't really do that often to begin with, that's why my percentage is going to be pretty low on that one. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably going to be low for me, too. Maybe like a 10, 15 percent. Like, Metroid is still a franchise that Nintendo, I think, is a little bit hesitant on. Like, mm -hmm. they didn't go as hard with Metroid Dread as I thought they would. Like, we got the game, which was great, and then we got, like, an update or two, um, which is sufficient. But I kind of wish, like, the, the Metroid hype train was still really kind of going, and it's not. Which is understandable, because it's not a massive, like, huge selling franchise for them. So they're not going to go super hard with it. But with that in mind, I don't think like it's a game that would be set up to even have an expansion. I would be wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't like an expansion pass at all. Uh, you know, we just get like Dread style like free updates here and mm -hmm. there. Maybe like a DLC pack, but not like an expansion pass. Maybe they don't call it that. I don't know. Um, like new skins yeah, or still, something like that. Or maybe it's just like a single new downloadable like mission or whatever it is. Like I don't I don't necessarily see it being something that they're gonna like have this prolonged post-launch like dlc scheme for so i especially at day one or even announcing it at that point i still think like for, i think metroid still needs another like like dread sold well but it's sold and i think it ex not expected but like it's not like it doubled metroid prime in sales or anything mm -hmm. like that like it, it's still it's still sold pretty well but it does it didn't blow everything out of the water i think metroid still needs like a bigger release for them to really feel confident about going more like gung-ho with it so mm -hmm. i would be hesitant to say that we get anything like this i would give you like 10 or 15 percent one thing i will say just to play devil's advocate is that you know um you know we mentioned how you know metroid's obviously you know not a big system seller but you know, we also mentioned, again, Fire Emblem and Xenoblade, which are two examples of these series that have historically gotten these day one passes that you can pre-order. And those are also not historically high-selling franchises. I think Fire Emblem right now sells a little better than Metroid. I think nope. Three Houses is at like 3.5 or 3.6. Nope. Um, I, I, think, I think Dread has already done what uh, Three Houses did. I mean, well, we don't know that yet. I mean, the last one was two. Obviously, it's broken three by now, but we have no idea. Mm -hmm. At the very least, I would imagine it's like close to or on par to three houses i don't yeah. know if it's surpassed it yet though uh, I'm not fire emblem and, and xenoblade are actually like really good contemporary examples but, but xenoblade but xenoblade though i mean i think the highest selling entry in that is like two million maybe just over two million and so that's so that's not on the level of metroid and you know that has historically gotten the day one pass so again yeah. I, I still don't think this is happening but i just want to throw those examples out there okay yeah, no, I think that, that's a that's a fair point yeah um i mean Xenoblade, I guess, is still not like a first party Nintendo franchise. So maybe that yeah, makes is. a difference. Oh, is it? it, it is yeah, it? yeah, it is first party. Yeah. Is it? Is it really considered like first party now? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I would say the thing about Fire Emblem, Xenoblade, and Metroid, which makes Metroid Fire different. Emblem, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I think like Nintendo gets Xenoblade and Fire Emblem. Yeah. You know what, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think they're still trying to figure out what. They're anime. They need to make Metroid anime, and then it'll have an expansion pack. Well, the big thing sure. is, like, Fire Emblem and Xenoblade also do really well in Japan, and that's the big thing exactly. that Metroid doesn't yes. have. It doesn't have that Japanese audience. They're, they're trying to figure out who Metroid's audience is that, that has a Nintendo Switch. Because I think that, like, people mm -hmm. that like Metroid probably have, like, an Xbox or PlayStation. Like, they're in sci-fi stuff, which doesn't always jive with the Switch. And, and so, yeah, I, I don't know. That's a good point. It, we'll, we'll see. Um but actually, to, to kind of hop on that a little bit, here's a, just a general Nintendo uh, Samus' percentages for you. Going back to Tears of the Kingdom, if, if, if there is a Nintendo Direct this February, at least 75% of it is dedicated to Tears of the Kingdom. Mm. I'm actually, I'm going to go really low on this. I'm going to say 10%, just because of, like, you would think that they need to sell us on tears of the kingdom because we've seen so little and it comes out in like 90 days. But with the, with everything that Nintendo's done so far with the marketing and promotion of this game, it's actually quite baffling to me. So I, I would actually be low. I could see them just having like a little trailer at the end and like them calling it a day. 
I'm also I'm also going to go low on it just because of like the uh, ironically enough the percentage you gave the 75 percent I don't think it would take up that much of the direct I think even Smash Ultimate when that was revealed I think that took up maybe 50 percent of that E3 direct when that was obviously like the big showpiece yeah and so I w- I would imagine at most. Tears of the Kingdom would occupy that much. I think it would be closer to maybe 25 or 30%, though, of that direct. So uh, I I guess I guess my percentage would be I guess I'll give a similar percent. Why not? 25%. Okay. Um honestly, I feel like if it was gonna be 75% of a direct, they would just do a Zelda direct. Like they would just have a direct for the the, the game by itself. Like mm-hmm. I don't even think they would bother having a direct with it being such a large portion than having really other nothing at like very little bit afterward Con- like contrastly i don't think they would just do like a single trailer so yeah i think that's pretty low i could see it maybe taking up like 30 or 40 percent of a direct yeah 75 percent of a direct they would just do its own thing which honestly i wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what they do if they do yeah a month i hope before so. the game comes out doing uh breath of the wild too I, I definitely Correct. think we'll get more than a trailer. I think they, I think they will do a, a deep dive into it. I just don't, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near seventy five percent of that direct, I, even if it's yeah. a direct mini. Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, they should have like a, a specific Tears of the Kingdom direct and like, a, like a treehouse almost of like people just playing. Metroid Prime Four direct. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's keep it going here. Two D Metroid, as directed by Sakamoto. So as long as Sakamoto is directing Two D Metroid will eventually acknowledge the Metroid Prime series and events that take place. Oh, God, I wish. Wait, can you repeat that? <laughs> so, 2D Metroid games uh, that are directed by Sakamoto will eventually acknowledge the events of the Metroid Prime series. What do you mean by, like, acknowledge? Basically, just that. Like, you know, Metroid... The events on Talon 4 happened. The event... Because, like, you, you play metroid dread or samus returns and it's it's truly like those games don't really exist um and maybe maybe they are not sure how to work that in but uh you know uh, also i don't know they they just they haven't crossed over for whatever reason into 2d metroid so will will that ever happen as long as Sakamoto I, is is in charge of 2d metroid. Is, is, is i think it, proteus ridley is gonna be yeah. the closest acknowledgement we get if I'm well, being I was gonna honest. say, isn't Proteus Ridley already them acknowledging that Metroid Prime is part of it, the story? I, I mean, so is it, the thing. It is. It is. But at the same time, it almost feels like that there's enough plausible deniability at the same time. To I agree. The, like, like you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, why? Like, if you called him Meta Ridley, there's no plausible di- deniability. Yeah, exactly. Because you called well, him Proteus Ridley, it's like, I, I, I think it's pretty obvious that they're referencing Meta Ridley, but you could theoretically. I, I, that, that's not enough could, for me. I don't you think. You could. You could say that. Well, I'm not saying it's enough. I'm just saying, like, because the the prime story doesn't really have anything to do with the rest of the story. So why do they need to mm-hmm. acknowledge well, it? And yeah, let's let's really use this as an example. Like when you finish Metro Dread and you get all the special endings, you get the title cards of each game, right. other M included. Um, so even like something right. like that to acknowledge Metro. I mean, I don't know exactly what it would be that they acknowledge it, but uh, off, I, I'm gonna get off topic. Yes. Or, or sorry, go. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I was going to say, off topic, I thought, a, I'm really sad they didn't do this, but I think a really cool reward when they added the Dread difficulty, because you did they just reused the hard mode screens, I thought it would have been really cool to add the, um, some prime art for uh, when you 100%. do the Dread mode runs. Yes. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Can you imagine it's like, it's like Metroid Prime Pinball Federation Force and Hunters is like the, the screen that you get? Um, I mean, at least they got one of the greatest games of all time in there. Hey. Okay, I, I'm actually, I'm going to go high on this, because I, I just, I feel like they... They have to at some point, right? Like it just doesn't make sense not to acknowledge the Metroid Prime series, especially with Metroid Prime Four coming out. So I, I'm gonna say eighty-two percent that the, eventually this has mm. to happen, or like Admiral Dane shows up, or like you know something, something happens. Like and, they and, don't have the they don't have the guts to put the Chadmiral in 2D <laughs> Metroid. And I'm not talking like a a, a slight reference, kind of like Proteus release. I, I'm talking like. Someone says, like, the events of Talon 4, or, like, someone's, like, when Meta Rid... Like, something that, like, it very clearly there's no room for doubt. So, I'm going to say 82%. Um, I'm going, like, 14, 15%. I think, it, I think it's 50-50, because I don't think it, like... They're not really compelled to one way or another, so they're not motivated to do it. But it's not, I don't think it's unlikely that they would. 
like again Proteus really is an example of them acknowledging it or like referencing it in some way but like would there be a reason for them to bring up the events on Talon for it has nothing to do with that story mm. could someone mention it offhand sure which is why I think it's like 50 50 like they don't have the motivation to do it but it's not out of the possibility and they've kind of already done it and it doesn't really conflict with the main story so like maybe they do bring it up maybe they don't like 50 50 on that one really one more devil's advocate I will bring up is, you know, Sakamoto, he hasn't directed a game since Other M, and I, I don't foresee him directing another Metroid game in the future. It seems like he's more comfortable being in that producer, executive producer role of the series. Hmm. Um, being have, Having oversight, but not having, um, not having like, the last word and the, the creative control and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, while I don't think Sakamoto himself has any interest out of the prime series not out of a distaste for them but just it's just not on his mind um i could see a future where potentially you know some other director decides to toss it out there and i don't feel like sakamoto would shoot that down either right. so okay maybe i'll up it maybe i'll up mine to 20 percent yeah, i mean i would like okay. to see it it would be cool to have some more integration in there because at the end of the day it is it is still one story like one timeline as far as we know right mm -hmm. so like it would be cool to have a bit more of a crossover and not feel like these things are so disconnected because i don't think there's really any good reason for it uh, aside from it just being relevant or not to the big story being told and so far metro prime hasn't but who knows yeah it would be cool to see like a character from metro prime show up in a post dread game and i think honestly that'd be a really good opportunity because now that there's the, whatever comes after dread's going to be a new storyline mm -hmm. they do bring back an admiral dane or whoever you know to show up someone i don't know some random dude on the <laughs> can you imagine fighting raven beak in 3d oh man that'd be awesome yeah that would be sick i i would love more crossover for sure yeah like absolutely as long as we're still getting metroid in those two different perspectives yeah mix and match them who cares uh okay this is this is a callback to one of our earliest earliest episodes Dak. so you you can go first on this oh, one i'm sure i'm gonna remember what you're talking about i think you will Nintendo tries the Metroid Prime Hunters concept again and releases it as a standalone game. So essentially, we're saying they're making Metroid Prime Hunters 2. Mm -hmm. I mean, they almost did, and then we got Federation Force instead. I say, I read recently that they almost did it twice, and <sighs> we ended up getting Federation Force. So, like, I'm actually kind of low on that. Um, I've already said my piece on this a ton of times, how I think it would be... There's no point in splitting up an already small fan base for the games, like... Release it all in one package. Make Metroid Prime with a single player and multiplayer. Don't split it up. It would be mm -hmm. like it would be to me like splitting up the campaign and then the multiplayer for Splatoon. Doesn't make any sense. So for Hunters, it made sense because the DS like they were trying to show off the multiplayer capabilities so that came first, and there still was a campaign technically, and they were trying something new. It's a smaller team. Like they had to kind of focus one way or another. Retro, I have every faith in being able to pull off both. Um, I mean, if it if it's the difference between getting a multiplayer Metroid game and no multiplayer at all, yes, I would obviously prefer Hunters 2 to come out. Um, in terms of Nintendo, I don't think Metroid... I mean, again, you could say, well, Fire Emblem only has so many sales and has the main Fire Emblem games and Fire Emblem Hunters and Fire Emblem whatever and this and that. Hunters. The Warriors games. <laughs> Warriors and, 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 yeah. and, and Gage and all that nonsense. So maybe Metroid could have the same thing. But Fire Emblem's been consistently putting games out for like, a long time and especially this new like upheaval of fire emblems now been going on for like a decade right like mm -hmm. had, it's, that's nothing new i think metroid still needs that yeah and needs that like like if this was back in the 2000s you know like late 2000s like yeah they could put out another metro prime hunters too like that makes sense um nowadays i don't think so i don't think nintendo would do it either i'd say that's i really think they're gonna put it all together on prime 4 like just have it be single player multiplayer in the same game so i right. would say it's like a 25 percent chance for me but i would love to be wrong I, as they give me hunters either way i would love to be wrong but at the same time i would prefer to be in one package so that way everyone just gets prime four I, I, I let, definitely... me, let me cut in let me cut in because i i want to steal everything dak said because i agree 100 percent with like every word that just came out of his mouth but except for the percentage I think that there's probably no reason to ever release it as a standalone game when you could just include it with Metroid Prime 4. So I, I, I would say, or Metroid Prime whatever, so I would say like 3%. Okay. Yeah, That's I as mean, close as I'll ever get to zero. Okay. So so I pretty much also like agree with all, all the arguments here. And I think I think the big one 
that you mentioned, Dak, is the fact that um, both the handheld and consoles are now consolidated into one platform. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest hit against this. That being said, like you like you mentioned, there might be a theoretical future where um, you know Metroid sales do start to get more consistent and pick up. Whether that comes to fruition or not, we don't know. Obviously, we hope so. In that case, I could see Nintendo starting to experiment more and doing it because, again, they clearly have experimented with the concept before, even though it never materialized. They did it. They did it twice that we know of. I don't see why they wouldn't do it again. So I, I think I'll do another twenty percent on this one. Okay, it's still lower than me. So all right, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's move 45. on and keep on the topic of spinoffs, um, because I, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about this one. Maybe Doom, you can kick us off. After the failure of Metroid Prime Pinball and Metroid Prime Federation Force and the, let's call it, lack of longevity for Metroid Prime Hunters, Metroid never receives another type of spinoff game. Uh, on point, I, I, Metroid will absolutely receive another spinoff game. I don't know what form that's going to take, but absolutely, at some point in our lifetimes, there will be at least one Metroid spinoff game. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do... I'm going to do... Repeat the question. I can't remember Basically, what Basically, the question in. is, Metroid will never receive another spinoff title. 0.1% chance. Just do it. Just say zero. Jeez. We're, we're, um, getting, we're, we're going to get at least one. I mean, yeah, I think we're going to end up seeing a spinoff at some point. Kind of going off of what we were talking about with the Hunters thing in the previous discussion is that, like, when you had the GameCube and the DS, you would like expect kind of the main games come out like on the GameCube or the Wii, whatever. And the DS is kind of where you get your your spin-offs, like your fun like puzzle version or right. whatever it is, pinball game. Same thing with like the Game Boy Advance with that. Like those had main games too, but like that's kind of like dichotomy you saw with a lot of franchises. And mm -hmm. now that everything's consolidated to the Switch, I think the likelihood of some games getting spin-offs did kind of go down because if they're gonna make a game on the console, they're gonna focus all their efforts I on agree. doing that. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, Metroid also hasn't been made um, internally in a while. So they don't have like multiple studios working on Metroid at the same time, which was kind of like a thing in the, the past. You know, you had like the internal Nintendo dev team and then you had Retro or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, now it's, you technically have two, I guess, because you have Mercury Steam and you have Retro Studios, but they're both make, working on main Metroid games and not spinoffs. So, um, I mean, I would love more Metroid spinoffs. I think that's like one of my some of my favorite stuff is in the spinoff like area. Even for other franchises, Mario, especially Pokemon, like mm -hmm. Zelda, like those all franchises have so much depth because of their spinoffs as well as their main to line games. Um, but Metroid is still so dire for like actual main games. Like in the past, almost in the past decade, we've only had two main Metroid games come out. Right? We had Samus Turns and Dread. That's it. Like that's still pretty famine for the IP. That mm -hmm. said, yes, I I think eventually we'll see a spinoff. I think on this question you might want you maybe it would be better if it was like in the next five years, or the next ten years. Sure, that's, yeah. that's, that's we, we can do a bonus question. percentage if if we want. Should we should I, we change a question to the next ten I, I, years? I think we sh I think we should because okay, if let's do that. Ever if it's ever yes, I think it's a like a point one percent. We're gonna eventually see one. Okay, next five years, I think that's very low. Why don't we try? Why don't we try ten, 10 years? years I think that's high. a good time. So I, think I think ten years, years is a good medium. Yeah. Okay. I think we can, I, I think it's like a 40, 50 percent chance we see another Metroid spinoff in the next ten years. Sure. Okay, Doom. Do you want to rephrase your percentage? Um, yeah, sure. We're uh, so we're going to go a little bit higher than point one percent. Uh, yeah. For um uh, for the uh, for the ten year mark, I'm gonna say. Yeah, I I think I think forty percent. Yeah, forty percent for ten years. That sounds right. I'm a little bit higher than you guys. Uh, I'm gonna say, so let me rephrase. Let me rephrase the question so everyone can follow. So we will not have another Metroid spinoff title in the next ten years. So that's our new retweaked question. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And and I'm gonna so say the negative question. Uh, I'm gonna say like seventy five percent. So um, we won't. I'm, you think I'm gonna seventy five percent? That's we won't have one in the. Next we will 10 not years. have one in the next ten years. I'm yeah. I'm gonna change it to fifty five because I, I forgot it was a negative question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'll change sorry. it to fifty five. Sorry, I, I should have repeated Lots the question. Of, Positive questions. Yeah. Will we see a spinoff? Um, <laughs> so the reason for this is, as much like you said, Dak, like there's, there's really no alternative to making like a big, like physical copy title now. Like you could have got away with some of that on the DS. 
I don't think that Nintendo was really in the business of making those, like, crappy eShop games that have a bunch of gimmicks, except for the Kirby series, which you can find those everywhere on the eShop. But, like, for the real Nintendo franchises, there's not really a whole lot of that. And, actually, the place where I would have thought... For the thought, real Nintendo yeah, franchises, this guy. The, the place I would have thought that Metroid had the best chance of having a spinoff is actually, like, on your phone. Like a mobile game, but uh, Nintendo... They went hard for, for a couple years in, in the mobile world, but now they, they've pulled out. So I don't... Yeah, I, I just don't see it. Like, I don't know what... I don't think we're getting Metroid Warriors or, you know, Metroid... I would play Metroid Warriors. I, I, well, I mean, like... so would I, but like... I mean, I would play Metroid anything, to be fair, but I I just... I don't see it. I would love to be wrong, uh, especially in the next 10 years. If, if it was the original question, like, ever, I would have been like maybe 30 40 percent but within the next 10 years unless metroid prime 4 is like a huge smashing success i i, I don't see it yeah yeah okay well then, that. <laughs> let's move on let's go to our next actually we have a couple uh smash bros samus's percentages here so uh let's kick it off in the Sweet. next super smash bros game samus's dread suit will be her base model so like the the base model Smash game or I uh, design. Is, sorry, I think this is all dependent on when we see the next Smash game. Wait till my I next mean, question. Yeah, because frankly, I I have no idea like where Smash goes after this and when we're gonna. Obviously, we're gonna have another Smash game in the future. Obviously, but yeah. like when and how, what form that's going to take place, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it's gonna be I'm on the next s- Nintendo console for sure. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, uh, honestly, I think I might go a bit low on this, weirdly enough. I think I might go 15%, if I'm being honest. Because I feel like the next Smash is going to be a ways off. Like, 2028, 20, mm. 2029. Like, 2029? So, no way. I, th- I, think, I think it's going to be a while before we see the next Smash. And by that time, I think we're going to have at least one more new 2D Metroid. And I would imagine the new suit is either going to be based off of Prime 4 or that new 2D Metroid. And so unless Samus has the the dread suit again for the next 2d metroid which i think it's going to be another new suit um i i think dread just missed the boat unfortunately which is a shame because i love the dread suit i would love that as a base suit um but go ahead andy what do you think i think so the key word here is is like the base model so smash ultimate change link from like the the green tunic to his more breath of the wild outfit but i i think well i don't think it's going to be 2029 i do think that the next smash game is probably still a couple years away um and i think i have no doubt that the dread suit is going to be like a selectable costume and not just like a quasi swap like it's going to be like the dread suit but i don't i think the various suit will still be her like like first like when you you know when you're looking at all the characters and the renders and stuff like that she'll still be in the various suits so I, i'm gonna say i don't know let's see 30 percent. just just because maybe you know like maybe it'll be there but i i do think that the classic berry is probably still gonna be what you know what what is is reflected in the next smash bros and frankly it- whatever her suit is a metro prime 4 could very well be the the base model well, I'm hesitant. I don't know. It's weird because, like, on one hand, we did, you know, we have seen Metroid Prime content in Smash. I mean, we got Dark Samus. We got uh, the Meta Ridley skin. So mm. we do have precedent of Metroid Prime content appearing in character form. But Samus has never had a costume change from the Metroid Prime series before, despite, I think, I, I think arguably Brawl was, like, should have been the time where Samus got, you know, her Prime various suit. But instead, we got the Zero Mission version. Um, yeah. And so... Uh, I'm not sure what form that would take. I feel I feel like for Samus and specifically Samus, they might want to keep that that design to a 2D design. But I mean, we could be wrong, and you know, maybe maybe uh, design plans change. You know, it's been uh, you know, by right. the time the next Smash will come out, it's going to be probably like 20 years since Brawl I, came out. I, I feel like 100, percent maybe not 100. percent I feel like 90 percent sure that like the Dread Suit will be an option to to play as. Because I, I I don't know if you guys agree with that. I would say like the Dread Suit has like kind of reached the same territory almost as the fusion suit and it's just like a beloved suit and look for samus mm-hmm. so like i i think that it's going to be there i just don't know if it's going to be like the default 
select base model version. I mean, as long as Other M isn't the default suit, then I'm a-okay with that either yeah. way. Yeah. That's really the, the biggest thing. And actually, that worries me because I wonder if they, like, they'll just port over her Other M suit again like they did from Smash 4 to Ultimate because I'm so sick of looking at that. Um, I think what, what I think of this, first off, you bring up the fusion suit, Annie, but there's a reason why the fusion suit is not in Smash aside from being a, a you know a different a, a color you can get is because it changes Samus structurally mm -hmm. how she looks, like her hitbox would be different. Right. And that's what I kind of feel is the same with the dread suit because it is more slim than your kind of you know your Super Metroid or your Zero Mission or your Metroid Prime suits, which is why I'm, I'm hesitant to say we we will get the dread suit because it would change up her character model i think somewhat significant not super significantly but i think noticeably um yeah mostly but, those shoulder pads but yeah so shoulder pads especially um truthfully i think we are more likely to see the metroid prime f mm. i don't know it really does depend on when smash when the next smash comes out but oh, this... i could i guess i could see it being dread but i almost feel like Metroid Prime 4 could be out and then four years pass and then the next Smash game comes out, in which case they probably would go for Metroid Prime 4. Um, I don't know. That, that's a tough one because I'm so afraid they'll keep the other M suit just because it's easier. Dread, I can Oof. see, though, because I mean... I'm feeling pretty confident we won't see the other M I, suit. I think so, I think, too. I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I, think but... the I think the only reason we saw the other M suit was just because... Um, I Smash think Samus Returns... Well, no, I think Samus Returns just missed the boat. Because, like, if you look at the spirit... It really did, the game, yeah. If you look at the spirit for the game, it's the Samus Returns render of her doing that iconic pose. Yeah, it is. And it, I think I think they would have built... I think they would have built the suit if Samus Returns had come out, like, another yeah, year maybe or two they, earlier. Maybe they do go with Dread. I mean, truthfully, the Dread suit's not really... The base Dread suit is not really one of my favorite looks. So I almost hope they don't do that. Um, I would rather see Samus Returns. I think it'll be way too long. But then again, I mean, mm. Brawl Samus was... Um, an amalgam of things but they didn't change it suit like they didn't go for well they use well they use the zero mission sh they use the no. zero mission suit in Brawl. right right but like it's still closer to like her melee and 64 appearance than if yeah she i would with agree with that i, I didn't look at something. that suit and be like oh it's it's the zero mission suit like, that's it, what i'm saying yeah. yeah it's like it's like oh mm -hmm. it's her smash suit which is mostly influenced by like super metro but has some zero mission influences yeah. now like so and that was that stays for mad long in smash so who knows like maybe they do go with the dread suit and then it just carries on maybe metroid prime 4 i think if metroid prime 4 comes out in the next year or so i think it's going to be that because i think by the time the next smash comes out will have had Metroid Prime 4 for a few years and it'll probably would have not missed the boat or whatever it is. Okay. I don't know. I don't I don't think the dread suit is a shoe and I I'm 50/50 on that. Give us give us 55. a give us a real percent. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say 55. So this is the perfect segue into my next question here. I already know what your guys percentage are going to be, but Samus's next appearance, let me rephrase this. Samus will appear in a new Super Smash Bros. game before she appears in Metroid Prime 4. AKA, AKA, there's a new Smash coming out before Metroid Prime 4 ever does. Absolutely not. not. Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> okay. I don't think that happens. I mean, I think we're going to, if anything, they will give us a Mario Kart 8 situation where they just start putting out more DLC. I'm waiting for the day for them to be like, oh, by the way, we're actually doing two more character passes. Like, I'm totally waiting for that. I Honestly, that. that's what I want. That's what I want for Smash, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, I would rather them like... do that. If anything, I'd rather them give me some stage packs. I was going to say, like, stages is what's stages, missing. Stages, Maybe. music, alternate costumes. Yeah, like, give me all that stuff. Free money. That is, it's free I, money. Like, Ultimate, that's one of my biggest things with Ultimate, is that it doesn't add a lot of new... It doesn't add any new stages except, the, like, one or two. Right. It just adds all the old stages, which is really cool. But, like... I would love some new stages, like from games that have come out in the past half decade or so. Like, give me some of that. I don't. Then, I think Ultimate's such a good base model for them to just mm -hmm. add stuff to, like Mario Kart 8 is. They're in no rush to make another Smash. I agree. I don't think we're gonna see one for a long time. And then you also have like weird stage inclusions, like uh, 75 meters that everyone's hate. But then you also have like the Pac-Man stage that's beloved, or Rainbow Road from the 3DS version that didn't come back. The, the Pac-Man stage with like the houses and stuff. No, no, no! That's the one that did come back. That everyone hates that stage. Oh yeah, that stage is no, no. garbage. Wait, wait, the, no, the, maze... the Pac Land one. Yeah, yeah. I love that stage. That stage what? is great. It's, I, I oh, can't even. It's, it's fun to play. On with right, which which Pac Man stage we're talking about? Like the classic, like the Pac Man the side maze. Scroller one. Oh, the side so scroller. That one, one is horrible. Is... 
That's the one in one. so the Horrible. one in ultimate, the one in ultimate is Pac-Land. That's the side scroller stage. Oh, that's the one that stage. that's the one that for some reason Dak likes. That's uh, it's a I good don't know. Stage. But the 3DS one, the one that everyone wanted, is the classic maze stage. And for some reason, they didn't bring that one. Hold Even on. Even though that's like more of a Pac-Man stage. What do you have against uh, the Donkey Kong stage? Seventy-five it sucks. meters sucks. Yeah. What's wrong with that stage? It's awful. It's like it's barely, terrible. You move it's of it's fun. You you've got like the nostalgia with like the I, I like it. There's no room for movement though. Like <laughs> well, yes, but <laughs> it's still pretty fun. Um, it's got a good track too. Okay, so here is a oh I didn't get my percentage. Uh, I'm also low, but I'm not going to be as low as you guys. Let's say okay. I don't know. 15 percent because i i mean who knows how that's far way, well I, I don't know that seems who way knows? too high who knows the, be, and, who and knows? let me let me tell you my rationale here is because like i i think at this point it's very probable i don't know if it's over 50 percent probable but at least it's probable or not unlikely that metro prime 4 is on the next switch or, or whatever that whatever is that that is going to be and so is it a launch title if it's not a launch title when does it come out and I think that you're not going to see a new Smash game until the next Switch. So, like, is that a launch title? Are they building it? Are they doing something different? Or are they just porting over Ultimate, like you guys said, and calling it something else and adding new stuff that you can buy? So that that's why I'm a little bit higher, because I do think that there could be some variables to that. But, uh, I, I mean, I mean I'm, pr- I'm in the same ballpark as you guys, generally speaking. But I'm going to allow a little bit more room for, you know, I mean, what if. Has Smash ever been a launch title? Well, Melee, Never. It, it was close. Melee yeah, launched, Melee like, released... two months after. Yeah. Okay, I would consider that a launch title. But, like, Brawl wasn't, Smash 4 wasn't, Ultimate wasn't. Right. I think it's very unlikely that we see a Smash game be a launch. I mean, if it is, that thing is going to sell a ton of stuff, I'm yeah. sure. But also, I don't see them putting out a new Switch that, like, boxes people out who already own it for a while, too. So. Well, that that's exactly. That's what I mean. So, like... If they if they have let's just say that the Switch Two comes out and let's just say that they do want to launch with uh with a new Smash game and that Smash game is essentially like for lack of a better term a port that carries over all of the characters from Ultimate maybe you just have new stages I, I don't know but I so I'm not gonna say that it's impossible but is I, that a I, new Smash game though technically if it's a port like well does, I mean it doesn't really count as a new Smash game like is Mario Kart Eight Deluxe a new Mario Kart game it's just Mario Kart Eight no, I don't think anyone would argue, but I don't know, right? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe there's enough that it's new. Uh, so that that's why I'm a little bit higher, because I do think that there are some, you know, there there's some things could happen there. So I, I think even with these caveats, we're absolutely seeing Prime 4 first. Well, I hope yeah, so. I, I agree. I hope so. At the end of the day, if there is a Switch 2, I think both games will come out on both the Switch and the Switch 2. Yeah. In yeah. my opinion. So. I mean, I've talked to some people online that are convinced, like, this game is in development hell right now and that we're never going to see it, which, I don't know. I think people need to calm down on that front, personally. I, I mean, I agree. But listen, it's not it's not impossible. Like, it's been, it's been five years, right? Like, has it been five years at this point? If not, uh, then, then pretty close. It's, we, been, it's been six years since 2017, four years since the delay. Four years since the delay. That's what I meant, sorry. Or the restart, really. So, so I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, I agree with you, Doom, but it, like, let's not kid ourselves. It's not impossible that they are hitting some snags, too, right? Like, It's not, it's not impossible, especially with COVID. I know COVID hit a lot of development studios really hard. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I would imagine, you know, with Retro, you know, having to do, you know, overseas communications, um, you know, with um, NCL, I would imagine that also, you know, provides some hiccups as well. That being said, I still just don't think that's a likely scenario. I mean, I don't, I don't either. It's possible. I but just it's don't possible. think it's very likely. Yeah. This is why we don't deal in absolutes on Sam's percentages. All right, here we go. This is a general Nintendo question for you. You underestimate my power. Well, I will estimate it for this next question. You can go first. <laughs> Uh, we are at the end of the Wii U ports. Every game on that system that Nintendo wanted to port over to the Switch has been done so already. Oh, that was the question? That, um, well, that, that's the statement. So no more ports from the Wii U. Yeah. I mean, so 2022 was the first year we didn't get a single Wii U port. Every single year since then, we've gotten really? at least one usually. Yeah, 2022 is the first year we never got... 
did, a single Wii U port. What what year did new the Super Mario Bros. with Bowser's Fury? Wasn't that 2022? That was 2021. Shut up. Was it really? Holy moly. Yep. Hey. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, 2020 was Pikmin 3 Deluxe, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, but yeah, last I... year was the first one we didn't get a single Wii U port. Um, personally, I think there's still at least two titles. I, Yoshi's Woolly World, I think, is a great Yoshi game. And even though I'm not a Xenoblade guy, I know a lot of people want uh, Xenoblade X to come to the system. That's what I was going to say. I, I think yeah, if and I was going to play a Xenoblade game, yeah. I want to play that one. And I know Bring a ton of people. I know, I know a ton of people would get hyped for that. And I think it would. I think you know, for a Xenoblade game, you know, it would sell enough copies to justify it. I, I think so. we could also see Wind Waker HD coming to Switch. I'm actually. Do we do we count that as a Wii U port though? Do we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Wii U port because it's it's yeah, not. Yeah, it, like, that yeah, counts. It's, Twilight Princess yeah. and Wind Waker. Yes. Yeah, those are those are. I, I think I could see I could see uh, those coming to Switch. Um, I would put that at like, wait, so the statement was, we're no longer seeing them. These negative questions, they should right. be positive. So right. we're no, no more seeing them. I say that's a, a 37%. I think we've got, I think they've got one more, two more in them. I think it's going to be a Zelda game. Okay. So you're doing what you got. Yeah. Th so I, th I think if we're including the Zelda titles, I'm going to, I'm also going to uh, do a 30 like Dak said. I don't think we're seeing them this year. I don't think we're seeing Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD this year. I think it's all about Tears of the Kingdom. Right. I think 2024 is yeah. a possibility to see one, if not both of those ports coming. Um, in terms of like actual like like Wii U games, like built for the Wii U from the ground up, um, I, I think we might, we might be at the end, unfortunately, which sucks because I, I, I think there's still some good games to port to that system. So I, I would say I'm a little bit higher than you guys. I'm going to say, let's say 47%. I, I think we're done. And uh, because I, I do think that there's still a chance. Like Xenoblade Chronicles X is like the big one that's left marooned on that system. Because like Yoshi's Whirly World got ported to 3DS. So I don't think they're going to do that. Um, Star Fox Zero was a debacle. So I don't think they're going to do that. They they want everyone to forget about that game. <laughs> like Mario Maker and Splatoon just got sequels, so they're not gonna do that. Nintendo Land is stuck on there. So really, I I think Xenoblade is like the last the last big one. Maybe the wonderful one hundred and one, but I I've never played that. Um, that would be a so cool I, port. I would I, take that. It kind of would. Like I don't know anything about that, but I I don't know if the audience is there. Well, that, for that port. wonderful one hundred and one already did get ported, right? I don't think it? maybe maybe it did. Yeah, I... it did. Yeah, yeah. They because they they released it for Switch, PS4, and Xbox. Oh, oh well, yeah, oh, okay. Right. Well, then never mind. Um, I'll have to so, check that out. So really, then it's just like it's just Xenoblade. That's kind of the one that's left, and I think that that port will still happen, but I don't know why it hasn't happened already. So like, I that's why I'm a little bit high. Did it with the Zelda games, like those games if if there was ever a time for those games to come i think it should have been last year because there is yep nothing for zelda like nothing um and i don't think that they're going to come out like i think obviously this year is going to be tears of the kingdom i think next year is probably going to be tears of the kingdom dlc and then like are we really talking about nintendo switch still in 2025 and we're not talking about the successor for that in that time you know Mm -hmm. so 47 percent. i think xenoblade is the only one left that that needs to come and i think it will but it's a toss-up it's a real toss-up i will say the pattern for xenoblade so far it's been sequel uh because we got xenoblade 2 then we got xenoblade definitive and then we got xenoblade 3 if the pattern would continue we would get another remake or a port and that this seems like the prime time to get x on there yeah yep i agree Port it to Switch and then end the franchise. That's it. We don't need any more. <laughs> you know what? Xenoblade We're Three, good. probably the best game in the series. It's really good, and it's not it's not stupid anime like you're thinking, Dak. It's, it's actually a really good story. I I I doubt that, but wow. I will take your word for it. To each to each their own. You know, people are yelling at me because I don't like Elden Ring, but I do like Xenoblade. So there we go. Um, okay. Mercury Steam is purchased by Nintendo within the next five years. I will go yeah, first on this. That. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 60% because I think that they, yeah, that's right. I think that uh, after they're done, whatever project it is that they're working on, which I believe is not for Nintendo, I think that they have a good thing going on 
with Nintendo and Metroid. I think that there's other franchises that you could give them that they could do like really good things with. Like I'm thinking like, what if they made like a Kid Icarus game? Like that would be awesome. Or like what you know those lesser franchises that that you can new you ice can outsource. Game. Let's get a new Ice Climbers game going. Dude, do you ever play Celeste? We need, like an open, we need an open world ice uh, ice climbers game. If they, uh, if no, they, made, if they made ice climbers game like Celeste, that would that would be so awesome. But like I, so I think it's gonna happen. We saw them purchase Retro. We saw them, and granted, that was a long time ago. But uh, you know, they they Nintendo invests in studios that they that they see value in. So maybe six maybe sixty is a bit high, but I'm gonna stick by it. By God, I'm going sixty percent. Uh, I'm going the dead opposite direction. I'm going 5% on this one. Um, modern Nintendo as we see them, you know, they aren't as trigger happy on buying studios. Um, they they have done a couple of weird purchases recently. Like they did, um, what was that one, what was the one studio they purchased okay. where they, they uh, bought and then the, they uh, the animation it. studio for the movie? That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, well, they that renamed makes it. sense though because. And they renamed it yeah. to Nintendo Pictures. But, yeah. Oh, but yeah, like. Let me, let me play Devil's Advocate really quick though because like. It seems like per- studios are being just like gobbled up by everybody. So like, well, well, that's the key word by everybody, not Nintendo. So Microsoft, obviously, Microsoft's having a field day right now. They're uh, they're battling the uh, FTC right now so that they can get a hold of uh, Activision Blizzard, uh, Sony. You know, they've been gobbling up studios, including Bungie, weirdly enough, who used to be a micro- Microsoft purchase. So weird uh, change of the change of the tides there is it just but me nintendo... by the way or does sony look like a bunch of sore little baby losers for this whole activision thing like you're still gonna get call of duty like mm-hmm. what are you complaining about stop anyways it's it, it yeah i agree it's it's business i personally I, I love it when corporations are mad and they're fighting but that's not neither here nor there yes um so yeah that's definitely sony and microsoft's wheel camp nintendo doesn't historically do that obviously you know there are exceptions to those rules you know we mentioned retro studios you know we mentioned nintendo pictures uh next level games probably like the mm-hmm. high probably like the biggest tier of like acquisition that they've gotten uh recently but monolith uh studios. specifically but specifically yeah monolith that's a phenomenal example considering how much of a role they play not just you know with their current games but also as a support developer for big titles like splatoon and breath of the wild but Typically, when Nintendo purchases studios, they're not actively looking for a new acquisition. It's typically when one of their partners is looking for a buyer. And as far as we know right now, Mercury Steam is perfectly fine in the position they're in. They're not looking for a buyer. And because of that, I do not see Nintendo um, doing that. Because like Nintendo has a lot of you know relationships with a lot of companies and you know similar scenarios. Like uh, Koei Tecmo is a great example. You know that's mm-hmm. a long time Nintendo collaborator. Um, but Koei Tecmo isn't looking to be bought, and so you know they they're have a, a much lot of bigger studio. To be fair, that that is true. But again, like I mean, even again, like even next level games, that's you know that's another fairly small studio in comparison to Koei Tecmo. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't until they were looking for a buyer when Nintendo was like, okay, you know what? There's a chance we might actually lose these guys. Um, we want them to play a role in our Luigi's Mansion series and some of our other stuff. We need them right now. And I don't, and Mercury Steams, I feel like, is even lower on that totem pole than next level, especially because they have um, less of a working relate, like they have less time in that working relationship. Next level has decades of experience working with Nintendo and for that relationship to build up. And so until Mercury Steam is looking for a buyer, I do not see Nintendo um, even attempting to purchase in them. Could be wrong, but that's why I'm going to give a 5% on this. Okay. Apologies for the Great Wall of Text there <laughs> Dak, what you think um i guess to keep it brief 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 wow um i guess to keep it brief i i agree with all of what doom just said i think my only like other thoughts aside from that is that whatever the cost would be to buy mercury steam probably wouldn't even be that much like i feel like nintendo mm-hmm. can kind of just like throw that money around and not even like care and just be like all right you're our metroid studio now i could see them even being like, hey, we'll be bought by Nintendo so that way they can support like the Metroid games we make and then the other games we make because they yeah. have like another one or two games they support and maybe they want to like grow and expand and use that added capital they'd get from Nintendo in order to do that and be like, yeah, we'll also make Metroid games every few years. Sure, why not? I could see that. Like, I, I feel like the investment wouldn't be a huge cost because they are such a small studio and maybe they would see it as a strategy like, hey, you know what? To keep this ship going forward, 
you're going to keep making 2D Metroids and then that's it. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to keep flip-flopping on studios, whatever. You're going to keep making these. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Mercury's team would be happy with that, especially if it was an exchange to maybe get some more breathing room or funding to increase their team so they could work on other games that they also want to do a from Metroid. I could see that in yeah. five years, especially with how like the economy has been lately. Like maybe they might need a buyer sometime soon for whatever reason, which I absolutely hope that's not the case, you know, for any studio, but mm-hmm. that could be a reality of the situation. Um, I, oh. I think it's, I don't think it's super low. I don't know. I could see that maybe being 20%. Okay. I, I will, I, w- I will say um, I wouldn't, I'm certainly not opposed to Nintendo. I'm, I'm generally not a fan of like, you know, smaller studios getting like absorbed into larger conglomerations. I'm not opposed to Mercury steam getting, um, getting bought out by Nintendo. I think that would be, I think that would be overall great for that studio, especially with some of the stuff that we heard behind the scenes with dread, you know, obviously there was the whole thing about, you know, you know, 25% of the staff not getting credited because they didn't work on the game for a certain period of time, which, I mean, that's just, unfortunately, it's a standard practice, but it's just, it's so disgusting. And, you know, if one thing, at least modern Nintendo seems to be a lot better in that regard, and I feel like they'd be able to shape that up a little, a little mm-hmm. bit better, so. We'll see. But I, I don't think it's as low as you're making it seem. I, I think, I think it could happen, and Maybe, I don't know. I, I think it's a, a pretty good chance. Um, okay, here's here's a spicy one for you guys. Let's go. Metroid Dread remains the highest selling Metroid game for the next 10 years. So I think that's going to be like a, a 1% chance. You, th- you think you're that confident in, in Prime 4? I think Metroid Prime 4 easily outsells Dread, yeah. Yeah. Without a question. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially Prime because 4- Dread already came out. Prime Four would have to review horribly, like, like not like not even review average. It would have to be it would have to be like a five on Metacritic to like, yeah, to like have a chance of selling less than Dread. I feel I th- like I think the name Metroid Prime Four alone makes it sell more than Dread, even regardless yeah. of the quality of the game. And then if it is even at least passable, and honestly, how do you even really screw up a Metroid Prime game if you just make it anything like the first three? It's gonna automatically be at least an eighty or a ninety. Like I and I retro easily outsells. Well, hold on. And hold retro on. and retro is making it. And retro every single one of retro's games, regardless of what the staff makeup is, has been well above average. Okay, yeah. so if I were to say to you guys the exact same thing about Metroid Prime Three and ask if it was gonna sell more than I don't know Metroid Fusion, would you not say the same thing? Right, like no. it's it's gonna be an awesome. Not game. Not necessarily. The, not necessarily. Not necessarily. That was in a different so, so time. I'm, because I'm, so I'm, con- I'm saying historically, the Metroid Prime series, other than Metroid Prime 1, didn't perform as well as the quality would suggest that it should perform, and that the brand itself isn't as... Like, it, it's still Metroid. Like, it's... it's it, it, You can't... You can't I, I think just because it's a Metroid Prime game doesn't mean that it's automatically going to do well. So, I think... I think my answer... I'm... I'm going to be higher than you guys clearly here but i think that the answer really comes down to is nintendo going to support this and market this and i think that the answer is obviously yes because they have to because there's so much money tied up with this restarting and development that they have to make big on this game so i i agree with you guys but i think i agree for different reasons if that i makes think sense. the switch audience I, I think the switch audience is significantly because like here's the thing there actually could have been a scenario where metroid prime 2 outsold prime 1 the biggest, and this was like the start of the big Metroid curse in that golden era, but Nintendo had the bright idea of releasing it during the same week as Halo 2, Half-Life 2, uh, GTA San Andreas, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, um, and this game just got absolutely buried. And ever since then, you know, the Metroid games haven't been able to really recover yeah, from I, that. I, I don't buy that because Prime all the, all the games that you listed were the- for different consoles. It's not, it's not Prime- like Nintendo fans had to pick and choose between those, like... You know, but the but the word of mouth and the marketing got better. Like nobody, like nobody was paying attention to Prime Two. Like Halo Two, I, I don't know if many people remember, but when Halo Two came out, that was the most anticipated game of all time at that point. That was all everyone was talking about. The fact that any of those other games even managed to get through, and consider, considering how well they're remembered today, I think it makes sense in hindsight. But yeah, Prime Two, it just it just did not stand a chance against that competition, and that I I would argue, it, I would argue is a big reason why 
none of the series the series as a whole was that, never I'm, able to recover from that i'm not buying because that it, argument it lost it completely lost the momentum that that first game held metroid prime and 3 think, metroid prime 3 comes out for the wii 2007 the wii. 100 100 million units sold and, and does, and who, does the worst of all was, three and what was the audience on on the Wii? What was what was the audience on the Wii? It was primarily grandmas and people who don't play games, or maybe not most, but a large grandmas. portion of that audience was a significantly more casual audience than sure. that of the GameCube. Yes. And so, even though the GameCube had a lower install base, a lot of those people that were playing the GameCube were more likely to pick up a Metroid title than that Wii audience. Sure, but, but Switch, we're not we're not just Switch talking has about the best of both worlds, though. But we're not talking about it like. It was just Metroid Prime 3 that bombed. Like, Zelda did fine. Mario did fine. Like, Donkey Kong did fine. Like, all those all those other series did pretty good. Yeah, even, like, even, like, Fire Emblem did fine. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, Prime 3 sold more than Fire Emblem at that time. But, like, I I, I think that it should have done better. And I'm, and I'm just... I'm worried that we're thinking that Metroid Prime 4 is going to be this blow-away game when... Well, I blow game well, in terms of sales, it's gonna, sorry. It's going gonna, it's gonna to outsell Dread for the simple... Yeah. I mean, I, I, everything Doom said is correct and i 100 agree with like marketing wise the game just got absolutely boned but aside from that the wii especially did not have an fps audience it had an action adventure 2d platformer does Mario the style. switch i say comparatively yeah, yes it does absolutely. It's a lot, okay. it, number one it's a lot more of a general gaming audience the wii absolutely was like literally made for grandmas like that's totally true and they even led into that like they leaned into it like everyone knew that i feel like it the was... switch really appeal appeals to that audience as well but it also appeals to a general game but, audience it kind of draws yes, everybody okay. it, ha it has it, it, it has, I, right which is what i'm saying it has a more general skewing audience compared it reminds me more of the ds if anything also the gaming audiences in general have changed since 2007 and i think mm. just in general people might be like fps games have taken over even harder than they have i think the name of metroid prime is a lot more well known and, and like taken as like high quality than sure. I mean, it was back then as well, but I think with time, that's only grown in, in that case. And also, the Switch just has like such a massive install base that isn't entirely just people playing with Wii Motes playing Wii Sports. But I think you're going to have you know a, a lot more people jump in. And then with the GameCube, okay, I, sure, I, a lot more percentage of people might play a Metroid game, but it was still such a small install base, it was never going to. You know, I've got two devil's advocates for you. First of all, what was the last Metroid Prime game released? Uh, Federation, well, Federation Force. Force. Yeah. So it's not like it's like exactly tied to the the best quality that there is. Second, no. What, but what happens? People, but that's, that's very that's, different. I I understand, but I'm just saying because that's not a fair argument. Because when we're talking, I'm talking about Metroid Prime. I'm talking about Metroid Prime colon. I know. I know. Prime, but I'm just saying, like the average blow. Federation Force not a. Well, the average bloke doesn't even know Federation Force exists. Well, so my second point, what I agree with what you guys are saying about the Switch. What if this game comes out on the, the second Switch that doesn't have... I don't it, know. It, it's going to come out on both the Switch and this next Switch. Yeah, there's no relevant. scenario where this game does not come out on the Switch. It, like... I agree with that. Yeah. If they're not going to they're not gonna have a million, billions of people buy the Switch and then make games for a new console nobody has yet. They're going to make it for both. Doesn't they that seem like it, the exact Nintendo thing to do? Do something obtuse like that? I don't. I don't. I really don't I, think I, that they would. I, so I, hope, I hope you're right. Nintendo makes a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm very jaded when it comes to Nintendo's marketing decisions. I am confident they would not do something that dumb, which I, I know that feels like a really. <laughs> and it wouldn't be that, the first time that they have multi generation That feels like a, main well, IP feels like a really releases. poor choice of words to say, but I'm very confident they would not do something that stupid. I mean, aside from all of that, I still think like Dread barely outsold Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime 4 is essentially Metroid Prime coming back again. It's not like, like there's been some time. It's going to have that new impact of, it's going to be, I wouldn't even be surprised if it's going to be like a reboot almost of Metroid Prime in general. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like, like the new Metroid general, Prime 1. And another thing to consider, for us, I, I don't know about you, Dak, but at least for me and Andy, Dread for me is a main course meal. For most people though, that is, most people consider that an appetizer. Prime 4 is the game that most people are really looking well, forward that's to. That's another thing too, is I think Dread having already now come out, has grown the metroid fan there base. it is yes yes it, it has grown the metroid fan base it has put metroid back into the general like zeitgeist right more people are aware of it now i think had metroid prime not i think metroid prime would still have sell dread 
But Metroid Prime 4 coming out after Dread is a big help because Metroid mm-hmm. Dread kind of is a stepping stone for a lot of people and got the franchise back and rejuvenated. I think if Metroid Prime 4 came in fresh, I still think it would outsell Dread. I think it's definitely getting the Dread bump as well. So in saying all that, I'm playing Devil's Advocate, but I'm, I'm actually quite low as well. I'm not as low as you guys. I was going to go like 15%, let's just say. But uh, and- I do think that there is some... Like, I don't think Metro Prime 4 is going to come out and sell, like, 5 million copies in the first three months. I just don't... I don't think so. I think it'll hit 5 million. Maybe maybe yeah. I, lifetime total, but, like... I, I Yeah, I, I need I need more data, like, once we actually see the game and once we see more discussion about it online. It's too early to predict sales numbers at this time, so... Uh, I think if it has a really solid multiplayer aspect as well, I think it'll sell a lot. Like, I think okay. for sure. That's fair. I think it's hitting at least 5 million. Okay, general Nintendo one. I'm I'm excited for this one. Speaking of what we were talking about before we went on air, the Mario movie will become the highest grossing video game adaptation of all time. I'm gonna go first. Hundred percent. I'm gonna say ninety nine percent. Hundred percent. Oh Unless, yeah. I mean, of all time, forever. I mean, I guess. No, no, no. Like, like for right now. Like... For right now. The for context, yeah. the highest grossing video game movie. I want to say is like Detective Pikachu or something like that, and it's like Bro. five million I or five hundred million. Sorry. I think the two. Mario Brothers say, it's movie. definitely not five million. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. I think the two Mario Brothers movie might one of the might be one of the best selling movies, best performing movies of all time, straight up adaptation. Oh, I can't say that. Question. I can't not say that. Question. Yeah, but, there's a lot of there's a lot of two billion plus movies in the top ten right now. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if Mario movie is th- gonna. I think it can that. do it. I Shout really out to my man, man, Big Jim. By the way, everyone's gonna see that, dude. I don't even. I don't even know if Mario Brothers is gonna top one billion. Like, I don't think so. Two, but I, I think um, it could be like eight hundred, nine hundred. The Super am, Mario Brothers movie. You don't think it's gonna hit a billion dollars? You're crazy. I, I'm not, not like I'm not saying I don't think I'm just saying it's not a guarantee. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked well, I mean, if it did, yeah, but I also either. wouldn't be flabbergasted very, very if it did. Exactly. Didn't. Yeah. yeah. No, I. But I, hold on, hold on. I wouldn't be flabbergasted. Shout out to my man, Big Jim, fellow Canadian. Four, or <laughs> three of the uh, the top four two billion dollar grossing highest grossing movies of all time are his. What a guy. I think I think Super Mario Brothers like right now. I think it will be in the top ten. I think it. I think it outperforms the Avengers. One point five million. Inter- all oh, life, that's... life. What? Yes, I commit. Like I'm talking not just domestically. I'm talking domestically, internationally. You kidding me? The Super Mario Brothers movie is going to go crazy. Everyone knows the IP. It's not unpopular anywhere. Like, <laughs> bro, I'm so, I'm actually shocked that you guys are underselling the Super Mario Brothers. Movie. I love this. Yes. Okay, I'm, really I'm, I'm, I'm with you. This is gonna be one of the best. I I think it's gonna be one of the best selling movies of all time. 100. percent What's a good compare? Like, what did the last Despicable? What did Despicable Me do? I think that's gonna uh, be about what Mario does. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. Despicable I don't either. Me, Despicable Me three. It's, it performed got over a billion dollars grossed. Did it really? Ooh. Yes. Okay. Really? You know what? One point. You know, you know what? Maybe billion one billion dollars. isn't. You know what? Maybe far-fetched. maybe yeah. Hearing that, no, I, I have to agree. Made a billion dollars. Bro. Oh, okay. Super okay. Zootopia? Zootopia? Make a billion dollars. You're you're crazy. <laughs> okay. Right? You know what? Okay. You know what? You you've won yeah. me over. Yeah. Mario yeah. Min- Mario's making Minion, a billion. Minions. One point one to five billion dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You I'm, you've I'm proven sold. your point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're you're crazy if you. Okay. At least makes a billion. I'm saying it's gonna make. At least Despicable Me 1. three 5. made a billion dollars. What? Yeah, are are, are like are we that uh, old and out of touch? Co- I'm What's going on here? Life, I'm I'm looking at top lifetime grosses on Box Office Mojo by IMDb Pro. By the way. Oh man, um, you can t- you can tell that like we're all the old guys, but we also don't have kids because like none of us have seen <laughs> Despicable Me three. Forty third all time. One point zero okay. three four billion dollars. Despicable Me three. You better watch out, Big Jim, because the Super Mario Bros. movie is coming for you. Um, I think it is, man. I think it's going to be the best. I think it's going to set such a record that it won't be broke for a while until the next until Super Mario Bros. two comes out. I'm especially sure. until especially if it's until they re-release good, good Mario Bros. ninety three, and that breaks two billion at the box office. Whatever you say. Dead silent. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Met- <laughs> Metroid Fusion. Take your medication, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Metroid Fusion were it to be remade. 
would feature full oh, voice no, acting again. and no text dialogue at nav stations. Yeah, I think there's going to be voice acting. Yeah. Yeah. But Very I'm likely. like, so I'm talking like they do this and navigation stations are out, like out the window. Not not necessarily the room itself, but like you log in and then you can move and then you can just hear the conversation in the background. What do you think? Um, I think well, it would be similar are, to Dread. Good, those I think are two different questions Dread, yeah. there, right? Because I think first is whether or not it's going to have voice acting of some kind. Yes, I think so. Absolutely. I hope... At, I mean, I really think that the dread voice for Adam sucks. Like, oh, I agree. Some... When I when I played Fusion, I got the feeling that it was like this used to be like, not used to be a person, but like, it didn't. It was it wasn't like a straight up yeah. robot y, you know? Yeah, like, like how was Samus able to that. like how was able Samus able to figure out that this robot in dread like used to be like her former commanding officer? AI, like... Yeah, like it's based <laughs> on him. Like that's what I'm saying. Like that building that human connection, I think, which they don't even try to do in dread because he's not even really in it until the very end and has no impact because they just don't cause... anyway. Um yeah, I don't I hope it's not that voice acting, but I think it will be. Like I think I think we're gonna get some voice acting for pretty much everything. Ex- Samus might say something um, once. I don't know. Um, now whether or not they keep nav rooms, I think they mm. do. I I like the idea of like you check in somewhere and she down. I mean, download something or starts a conversation in the suit and just does it while you're playing. <clears throat> but I think they'll still stay. I think for like big cutscenes, you'll be like locked in for the nav room but like minor updates Mm -hmm. okay like a brief conversation okay samus can keep going because by the time you get to the place then you can actually focus on what's happening and the conversation probably over but for like big cutscenes, i think those nav stations definitely stay for sure if anything i I wouldn't be surprised if they even make them like partially save rooms as well um okay or something like that Mm -hmm. like just to give them a little bit more utility i think they stay though for sure and honestly i like nav rooms i i don't never agreed with the whole pacing issue stopping blah 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 like oh my god i can't read 60 lines of text blah blah blah. oh my god like i i can totally handle it um and i like the the stop and goness of it like I, i i i enjoy the the flow of the game and how it is but i can agree that if they were to streamline it i think that would be a fair compromise i'd be i wouldn't be against that but i would hate if they got rid of them entirely because there are some major cutscenes that happen in those rooms and i think if you were to just be walking off or doing something and shooting stuff you wouldn't be paying attention to the story that's trying to be told and i think that would take away from the game so i hope they wouldn't get rid of them but yes i will think that there will be voice acting with that said because it's samus percentages i think it's like a 90 percent chance 95 percent chance that there's voice acting i'll agree i'll go i'll go 93 percent just to be different um I, there will be voice acting including for samus I just God, I hope it's not the miserable voice like the, yeah, the no, voice thing from awful. Dread. That would be all. Actually, I'm pretty sure I put out a Metroid music today that said something to that effect. So I hope that yeah. that does not return. Um, I really hope it does, and it, it shouldn't because like there's so much text. I you know I'm I'm actually talking myself down a little bit because like I feel like they should have just done that for Metroid Dread, just have like full voice acting, and they went with that like jumbled garbage. But I don't know. Honestly, no, I, I feel like they should have. I feel like they should have gone with a voice similar to like the Aurora units, because like I feel like that's something yes. that yeah, you know, you can connect more to like um, a previous human yeah. figure. Adam sounds awful in Dread. It's like Samus wouldn't have connected with this like text to speech thing. Like I don't, I don't really see that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think away from that really I haven't, bad. I haven't played um, Tomodachi Life, but apparently from what I understand, that's like a the, that voice also appears in that game. From really? what I understand. That's what I heard online. I haven't played same it myself, universe, so I can't. Same universe? Like, well, Sakamoto did direct uh, Tomodachi, Tomodachi Life, so it would make sense. But like, oh, A little, uh... little Easter egg. All right. <laughs> um, okay, we got two left, and then we'll get out of here. One of them is just a general Metroidvania percentages. So you guys can... It's actually kind of a two-in-one, so you can do like a, a dual percentage here. But uh, here we go. Axiom Verge 3 and Ori... Three will never happen because both studios have moved on to other franchises or other games. Oh, I know what inspired this because there was some tweet about them <laughs> making a Zelda game. You know what? No, I I just saw that like like moments before we started recording actually. But man, that's hype! Oh, uh, um, I mean, never happen ever. You got you see again. You gotta you gotta put some timetables on these questions here, Andy. Because never like I'm I yes I think Axiom Verge three happens before the heat death of the universe. Yes, but will it happen in the next five ten years? That's a completely different question. So that's 
I have another uh, let, suggestion for this show, for this game show, by the way, when we do it next time. But that's my first one. Is you got to put a little for some of these kind of happen. You, you ever give me just give, just give me a percentage about what what you think. What you think? Do you, do you so you think that they will happen? Because I actually I don't think that. Uh, yes. I don't know if Axie Verge 3 is going to happen. I would be a little bit lower on that one. Well, I don't know. I'm putting out like a 50... I'm putting out a 60% chance. Okay, I thought... So Doom is either 100 or 0. And like, I, I hate zeros, I hate 100s, and I hate 50s. It's it's not either of those. It's not either of those. Mainly because... So I'm not familiar enough with Axie and Verge to really be able to give a percentage on that front. Or I, I think Tom Happ is the creator of that. Yes. Of that series. So I, I don't really know I don't really know much about his background, so I don't really I can't really give a percentage on that front. Mm-hmm. I'm fairly confident we'll see Ori three someday. Like I feel like that name, like obviously it's not like a major, you know, it's not a major triple A like mm-hmm. big name IP, but like I feel like in the Metroidvania genre, it's a pretty big name in that regard. And I, th- I think I, that is like a pretty decently big name for yeah, Microsoft, yeah. to be honest. And, and, like yeah, and like, and you know, Moon Studios. I mean, they love that IP, and I would, you know, I, and obviously they're working on something different right now. But I have to imagine they would return to it. I have yeah. to imagine. So I, I think Ori. Is, I think maybe more than Axiom Verge. I think Ori Three is very likely more so than Axiom Verge Three. Uh, I agree. I was gonna go. So the question is that they'll never happen. Um, I was gonna go like. 20% for Ori, 40% for Axiom Verge 3. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll even go higher. I might go 55% for Axiom Verge 3 because I just don't know. I don't know what's left there. And I don't know because like, so Tom Hap develops these games solo. So like that, it the next game wouldn't be for years off. So right. I don't know. And, and he he has some other challenges in, in his life as well. So I, I don't know about that one. But uh, I, think, I think Ori 3... Definitely is going to happen. Although the ending for the last Ori game would lead you to believe that it's not. So we'll see. Money That's talks. Cool. All right. Last one. Here we go. Smash Bros. for the N64 will come to Nintendo Switch Online before Game Boy Advance games. Ooh. That's a good one. Oh, uh, I don't know. I can see this going either way. I I can't believe that Game Boy Advance games are not there already. I like I thought I this remember, September was was the time. Yeah, I, I mean, so I remember. Or sorry, you go, Dak. I don't. I mean, not not a Metroid question, so whatever. But um, yeah, I think Smash sixty four comes out before Game Boy Advance games. They already have in sixty four games coming to the Switch, so I feel like it just makes the most sense that that would that's a, one of the most popular games on the console. It's not on it already. I wouldn't be surprised if they announce it tomorrow. Or whatever at the next direct. Hey, Smash Six Four is on the Switch. Hundred, mm-hmm. I think I'd say it's solid 96.8 percent that Smash Six Four comes first. It was. I was gonna say. So I remember during the uh, the Metroid Dread marketing campaign, and I, I feel so bad for whoever the social media manager that was that had to make these tweets, but. Part of the Dread marketing campaign was to advertise, you know, all the previous 2D Metroids and, you know, talk in depth about them and their storylines. And of course, the entire comic sec comment section was naturally like, oh, wow, Nintendo, these games look really awesome. Where can I purchase these games to play them? <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, certified Nintendo moment. But uh, yeah, it's tough because like I... It feels like GBA, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, it, it feels like they should come out this year. But it also felt like they should have come out last year, and so it's right. hard to tell. And then in regards to Smash 64, like, I, f- I feel like that has to be a lock. But at the same time, Smash 64 didn't come out on the Wii Virtual Console until the very end of that console's yeah. life cycle. And it completely missed the Wii U entirely. But, I mean, at the same time, that was the Wii U. So I feel like what I, you said, I, I Dan... Say, uh, I'm sorry, I cut you off, Doom. Go ahead. I, I was gonna say I want to say Smash sixty four is a lock, but I mean, man, it's Nintendo. I don't know. For all I, for all I know, they would be scared to release Smash sixty four because they um, would rather right. players focus be focused on Ultimate. Right. That that's exactly my thought. So so for your comment deck, like I I agree. Like I feel like we could have the Nintendo Direct next week, and they're just like, here's Smash sixty four, and it'd be like yay. But I also feel like they could also be like. Here's Game Boy Advance games, finally. And everyone would be like, oh, great. It's about time. 
Yeah. So like, I agree. <laughs> well, I don't think well, I don't way. think we'd get I don't think we get a Game Boy Game Boy Advance um, announcement until the September direct. So I Smash 64 could ha- theoretically happen between now and then. You know, but I don't think we get Game Boy Game Boy Advance until September. For the last couple of years I'm trying to sound smart by saying, like, we'll get NSO announcements in the September Direct, because that's when the the renewal takes place. And every year, I'd look like a fool, because nothing ever happens. Like, since since they brought out the SNES games on Nintendo Switch Online, nothing happens. So I'm just, I've completely given up trying to guess when they're going to say that. I'm going to say, so the question is, will Smash 64 appear before Game Boy Advance games? I'm going to say 60%. That's my percentage. This is no honestly, idea. I could go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go either 49 or 51. Cause honestly, this one is a true 50, 50 for me. I can see yeah. it go either way. If there's really no like good precedence here and who yeah. knows what they're thinking. And all right, pick know, one, the flip 49 or right. 51, 49. I'll go 49. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right, gentlemen, there it is. That's all the whoa, questions whoa, whoa, for whoa, Sam's whoa, wait, percentage. Wait a second. For, I have a question because I can't let you. I can't let us end a Samus percentages on not a Metroid game. Okay, hit, so hit I us. have a question yes. for you guys. Well, Samus one appears question. in Smash sixty four. You know what I mean. So, <laughs> and the one before that was another not Metroid question. Really, okay. What do you? What percentage chance do you guys think that other M is ever ported to any other system that it's not on? Do you think it'll ever ever be ported? And I'm and I'm not giving I'm not giving a timetable. You have till the end of time. Do you think that other M will ever be ported to anything other than the Wii? Well, technically, you can play it on the Wii right now, but I know what you uh, mean. Yeah, I do. I, I well, let me rephrase. I think that ported, not remade, not right, remastered, right. ported. Ordered. So, so you would have to you'd have to redo it slightly, just because I'm sure they would tweak like the. The sideways control gimmick. So, so kind of like what they did with Skyward Sword. I, I would consider that a port on the Switch, right? But like even though they tweaked the controls, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't count changing up the controls to right. make it work for the consoles being ported to as a new game. It would still be a port, yes. I I think never say never. Like I, I think that... Okay, next, next 20 years. You know? Uh... Next 20 years. How about that? Next 20 years... I, I'm, I'm not going to say game. that it's like definitely going to happen because I, I think that people there would have to be significant changes maybe to some of the dialogue or the st- like not like you change the game or anything like that but like just improvements like in the same way that like Xenoblade Chronicles improved the graphics of the original game when they okay, made well- it to the Switch. Well, I think sure. I think we're going. I think we're leaving the port territory in that point. We're we're starting to go into a remaster well, that, territory. That's kind of that that's kind of what I'm thinking. Is like what okay, what well, what line is that? You know? Okay, I, I can bring it. Do you think other M will be brought to another system, whether it's remake, remastered, ported? I do. In the next twenty years. Next twenty years. I, I think I'll, so. I'll go ten percent. I'll go ten percent on that. I, I'm gonna go higher. I I, I can't say that I'm gonna go over fifty, but I'm gonna go higher because like. Why not? Like, you, you spent the money on this game, it bombed. It probably, I don't think, would cost that much to try and get something out of it. So I, I'll say... It might not financially cost them, but mentally it might cost them. Well, that's, that's I true. Mean, I remember, I mean, Morbius you say... bombed, and they put it back out again, and it bombed again. So you know what? Like, I watched Morbius that? last week. Guys, guys we, were, we were busy that week, and I swear, do it a third time. We'll come back yeah. this time. I watched what? it on Twitch like a week later. You know what the thing about Morbius was? I watched it and it, it's it not bad. even like it's not even like truly awful like it was bad yeah. it was bad but it wasn't like so bad that it was awesome you know it was just it's just kind of bad well, that's the thing is when i think of a bad movie i think of a like i think there's a difference between bad and like horrible like or, or morbius is bad and they're like it's still like a, a big production movie yeah. production like it's it's a it functions like a movie when i think of a bad movie i think of a movie that like you can see the boom mic and like the <laughs> editing doesn't make sense. Like that's a bad movie to me. I like, thought for sure you were about to dump on my, my movie there for sure. No, like that's like for, for all what it's worth. It's not like a horrible movie. It's a bad movie, Yeah, but it's not like a horrible, like, Oh my God, this was made by someone who doesn't know how movies are made or has never seen a movie. Those are, that, those are what I really like. And so Morbius yeah. to me is like, yeah, it's like bad, but it, it's not like, 
Yeah. You know, it was, it was just this is just like movie or something. It was just it was just a bad movie. It's one of many bad movies. It's it's not like so bad that it's like incredible. Okay, here's but a anyways. better question. Do you th- do, should should other M be ported or remade or remastered? Okay, I'm gonna answer both questions. So both. I know of them. that's not a percentage, but should it be? <laughs> okay, so the first per- the first question was it will other M ever be ported? I'm gonna say forty two percent, just because. Ported, remade, remastered. Could right. Be any of them. Just ends up in another system. Yeah. I'm going to say 42% because I think with enough time, maybe people get that foul taste out of their mouth. I think it's starting to happen already, to be honest. I think there are some people that kind of look back. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people who like, that was like their first, maybe even only Metroid game because it was on the Wii and, and right. like, a la- like a later release. Like there are some people who are like nostalgic it, for them. Like, oh, you, in our Discord. From history are born to repeat it. In our Discord yeah. yesterday, we were talking about Spider-Man 3. And this man to my right tried to tell me that Spider-Man 3 was awesome. Spider-Man 3 is a fun movie. So that my, very my point movie. is proven exactly with that, right? So should it should it ever be? If if they were to... I would be willing to, to have it ported over if they tweaked the dialogue. If they redid the dialogue like full like new voices for everybody and if they if they like fixed the control gimmick so that you're not flip flopping the the joy con sideways or whatever i could listen to that argument and and agree that if they were to do those things maybe it should because it there is some stuff in that game that's not too bad so yeah i don't know there's so i'm gonna i'm gonna say yes regardless which that might be a controversial opinion for even just the port, but in my opinion, I, I I just believe in game preservation in general, and I think you know even like 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 even Sonic 06, like Sonic 06, very recognizable, very recognizably bad game. I think that game should be preserved though. I think game preservation is important, and that includes the the stuff that we don't like as well. And so in that regards, yes. That being said, if I could choose, like, yeah, like, I think Other M absolutely could benefit from a remake, especially because, you know, regardless of what we think, Other M is always going to be canon. If it's going to be canon, why not yeah. make the best of that that you can, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. If they were to remake or remaster it and make it not bad and not the worst game in the series by a landslide and <laughs> remove all the awful parts of it, 100%. If they're going to just port it as is, I think the mental, like the psychic damage you would do to society is just not worth it. It's just, but, um, I, I just yeah. don't see a world where they port it as is. Like, I think you've got to do something with, with the story, with the characterization. Like, it's not like they didn't know that it was a bomb. Like I, I have Reggie fils book upstairs and he talks in that book about how horrible the reception was to Metroid other M. So like they know. So I think that if they were ever to, to do that, you would you would have to address some of the issues. I, I think it all I think it's all dependent on if Nintendo ever decides to do a kind of virtual console ish route again. So like right now in the current state of things, like they would not do that. But like, you know, let's say twenty years from now when games are more advanced than we can even comprehend right now and like the Wii is considered like an NES era console, maybe in that sense, mm-hmm. you know, when you know, maybe in that sense we would see another M port in that regard. That's kind of my thinking on that. You mentioned, by the way, game preservation, and I would normally agree that every game should be preserved, but... Even Federation yeah. Force. You, you can buy you know, copies. That game. You can buy Federation copies of Other M for like five bucks. So. Federation Force, I think you can preserve that. That game is fine. I have Other two M sealed, I have two sealed copies of Federation Force, despite my Other opinions of that not game. Be preserved. Yeah. Let me tell you but, something. Um, Last week, I was in a video game store, and I saw a box version a Metroid Prime trilogy for the Wii and a box version of Metroid Other M. One of them was five dollars. One of them was like two hundred dollars. So it's not like you're other not going to be able to find Other M. Two hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because it's so hard. It, to it was find the Japanese box. It. Actually, <laughs> I, I, I will box. say the uh, the Japanese box art for Other M. Looks it is sick. actually. That's it the is thing. Cool. Other M looks like it should have been really awesome. That's the yeah. that's the sad part. Is that it looks. It didn't look like it was going to be bad. It, it, until they showed the first person perspective i was like oh, i don't know about that but like i was like oh this is gonna be dope yeah they had us there in the first half not gonna lie they had us in the first half i was like oh that's gonna be sick that's gonna be awesome and then yeah well there it is okay there it is gentlemen another round of samus's percentages in the books this was fun and uh we're running long so i guess we should just uh go on and get out of here thank you guys for hanging out and uh thank you guys for listening and you can check out 
Uh, all of our mugs and, and other stuff over on OmegaMetroid.com. You can find uh, guides, maps, opinion pieces, merch, Patreon, all that stuff. There's extra bonus shows coming, by the way, over on Patreon. Uh, so tons and tons and tons of good stuff to look forward to. Um, and yeah, other than that, we're going to get out of here. You can check us out over on Twitter. I am at Spateri316. Dak is at DakCity underscore. Doom's at Doom Little Cross, and we, of course, are at Omega Metroid Pod. Check us out wherever you get your podcast. Like, subscribe, recommend us to that Metroid fan in your life. That's it. We'll see everybody next week. Take care, everybody.